Okay, let's move on to mm-hmm. the third pillar of electric fields. And we're going to talk okay. about something interesting called electric potential energy. What is this? Never heard before. Sure, no, never heard before. Very strange, eh, miss. Potential miss energy, energy heard energy. before or not? Yes, yes, miss. Got potential ah, energy. Ah, so potential energy is the energy of an uh, object due to its position, right? Like, for example, gravitational potential energy is the energy of a mass due to its position in a gravitational field. So, whenever there is potential energy, in fact, whenever there's some form of energy, somebody is doing the work. So, in this case, because we are studying fields, we are trying to be able to describe the field sufficiently. Just talking about force and how strong the field is, is not good enough. What's the whole point of having force? To do work. The whole study of physics is to manipulate forces to allow the force to do work for you so you can be lazy. So we don't have to walk, we can drive car. So we don't have to fan ourselves with paper fan, we can turn on the switch. Same idea. So here, we have learned to manipulate the electric energy. But at first, we need to start to define this electric energy as the work done. What is moving in electricity or in the electric field? You are moving a charge, right? So it's work done to bring a charge. And here's where it's going to be a bit iffy. La. From infinity far 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 away one to a point in the electric field and you might be thinking why these scientists are so ulea one why must be so ulea like so nothing better to do why must from infinity to a point we can't just like put a point where it's like normal one meter later it will be apparent when we start our derivation because scientists like zeros the terms cancel out Hmm. So in physics, you notice that a lot of times when we substitute weird, weird numbers, it's because we want to cancel out the terms. So we're going to, it's going to be defined as work done in bringing a charge from infinity to a point in, in an electric field. So if you look at the small arrow, the red arrow on the lower left-hand corner, you will remember that work done when it's introduced to you in AS chapter 2, AS, chap- AS chapter 6, is force times distance, ah. But you know if the force is not constant, we, we need to find area under the graph, right? So whenever there's kind of area element, we are looking for integration of FDR. Okay, so let us draw out the point charges first to figure out where is F and what is R. So let's say we are still going to stick to Q1 and Q2. I just paused. Let us draw the point charges. So instead of drawing our own point charge, I guess we're going to look at this simulation first. And in this simulation, you will see that uh, there's a red color charge here. And this graph is the force against distance of the force acting on this tiny red dot here. And you can see, obviously, the charge is the same, so they are repelling. And you can see, as I move the charge away, the force will become weaker and weaker, right? It goes very far away. Yeah. And you notice that uh, as the distance increases, the force will obviously drop because of the inverse square law. So although technically I can't bring it to infinity, but I guess I can bring it to this, which is close enough to infinity, la, I would say. All right. So if this is close enough to infinity, now let's think about the definition of electric potential energy. Somebody needs to do work to bring the point charge from 20, which is assumed it's close enough to infinity, to a point inside this electric field. Who needs to do the work? Do you think this red color point charge will help you? The red color point charge be like, I don't even like this charge that you want. I want it to go away. <laughs> so there needs to be an external force to push the point charge from infinity to a point here. So what we are looking for is how much energy do I need to bring the charge from infinity to let's say a point of uh, yeah, maybe 4 meters in the electric field. So 4 meters away from this red charge. Now you will notice, or if you remember, in your work done, the f- area under the force distance graph, which is this shaded region, is the work done itself. But how to find this area? We integrate law. We have an equation for F. We are going to integrate it with respect to dr. So now we're going to go and do that in our notes. Simulation, if you have a charge at infinity, like the one up here, you bring it to some close, closer position here maybe. Mm. At some distance, R away from this thing. So you kind of, if you want to draw the graph like this now, you draw all, infinity is very far away, and it's you find the area to needed to pull it all the way to this point. So something mm-hmm. like that. Yep. So how do you find area? Integrate. Integrate from where? 
from infinity R all the way up to some point R. Yes. Constant R. Yeah. So if you want to do your integration, you remember that it's U equals to integral of F D R. Franklin de Roosevelt. But also, oh, mm. you notice ah, uh, in books and past year they add a negative here. This one got negative. Uh. Why must put a negative? Here? Miss, can we first draw the direction of forces, the force acting on the black charge? Uh? Infinity very small. Closer already. Wow, very big. Mm. Can we then at least also draw another charge at the r equal to zero point? Ne, this one already here. Oh, this is the charge. Uh. Okay, sorry, I this must be blind. <laughs> okay, so the big charge, maybe we call it Q1. Okay, second charge, then we'll call it Q2. La. So we're just trying to stay loyal to the same symbols that we used. That's all. So Q1 and Q1 will push Q2 away. So that will be the F that we are trying to integrate, the red color arrow. That will be the F. And also at the same time, um, where is R exactly? You want to bring it from infinity to R, right? So you're going to draw another arrow, maybe a different color, from infinity, the orange color point, to R. Because this is the movement. This is the dr. You are traveling in this direction. You are So if you think about the normal work done, let's say you push a box, right? You take force times distance. The force and distance, number one, must be parallel. So good thing this two is parallel. Number two, they must be in the same direction. If they're in opposite direction, how? For example, let's say a block is going up the inclined plane, but there's friction pulling the block down. Then the work done becomes negative because that friction steals away energy from the system. So from the perspective of the electric field, it is being bullied by the force. Uh. Like, I don't want this positive charge. You die, die also want me to take. So I must include a negative sign here to make it simple for you to brain F and R opposite direction. The direction of force and the direction of movement is in the opposite direction. So when you find work done, F and R opposite direction, you need to put a negative sign there. Lor. So maybe in case you scared two months later when you look at these notes to study for your trials and then your brain panic, you write a nice note there. Lah. The reason why there's a negative sign there is not because your teacher say there's a negative. It's because F and R or F, direction of motion and the displacement is opposite direction. Okay, so we are ready to integrate. Okay, I think. Let's plug in everything we know. So, negative, ah, remember to explain. Okay, so hmm. we do what? Ah? F, I, ah, F, K, Q, Q. Q. Very cute one, the equation. K, Q, Q. Yes, over R squared. Nice. <laughs> okay, so we continue. K, Q, Q over R squared. Mm. Uh, so we have here negative F. Ah, throw the whole thing inside here. Q2 K Q one Q two over R square dr. First now order integrating of business. From where? Ah? Infinity to a point R in the electric field. Okay. Mm. How shall we proceed? Remove constants. Right. Yeah. Very nice. So we're going to integrate yeah. 1 over r squared dr. So let's ask our mathematic brain <laughs> what happens when you integrate 1 over r squared or r to the power of negative 2. Your power will be raised to the power of negative 1. So let us write that down first. Okay, copy okay, up all the constants. q1, q2 equals to mm -hmm. negative 1 over r. r. From infinity to r, so your r negative two become r negative one, and then and then you multiply by the new power. That is what introduces the second negative sign in the integration. So now we're going to sub the upper and lower bounds into your integral. So negative one over r, and sneakily without telling your math teacher, minus negative one over infinity, because in maths you're not supposed to write one over infinity. You're supposed to use your limits. Remember. So this whole thing immediately, I will cover this by cancelling it because I know 1 divided by a very, very large number is 0. So this is why we want to move the point charge from infinity to a point because our starting point is 0. When the starting point is 0, all the measurements becomes easier. Rather than finding the difference where you have to take two measurements and subtract, I will just take the starting point at 0, which is why it is defined as such. So now what we have is the negative negative sign will cancel off. 
and we are only left with kq1 q2 over r okay so you can put a box here so generally i tell students the integration is shown to you not so much as so that you need you must know you will not be asked to integrate anything but it's to allow you to accept that number one uh, although it looks like um, to get to potential energy you just multiply the force equation by r but actually there is a lot of work happening in the back scene where we have considered the sign carefully included the negative and then integrated it to remove the negative and why am i being such a uh, so particular about the sign because later on they will ask you things like is the work done on or by the point charge and then you will be confusion because you don't know how to consider okay so this is prime your brain first warm up this is energy the unit is joule and this is a scalar quantity and if it's a scalar quantity when using the equation we must substitute the polarity because the polarity of the charge tells us who is doing the work for example if q2 is negative i don't need to do work man you know, Q1, automatically fly there. Yeah, you? Q1 is going to help me, man. I just chill. I put the charge there. Q straight away. Q1 say, I come, I take. So when it's a scalar quantity, please substitute polarity. When it's vector quantity, do not substitute polarity. Because vector quantity, you need to draw a vector diagram. Then you decide whether you add or minus. Whereas for scalar, the positive negative sign does not have nothing to do with direction. It just tells you who is doing the work. Is the point charge Q1 doing the work or is there an external force needed to do that work? So if you think back of your about your gravitational field, right, your gravitational potential energy is always negative. Why? Because gravity will always do the work for you. You want to bring something from infinity towards the gravitational field? The planet will say ons, I pull. The sun will say ons, I pull. So if the electric field is doing the work, then the work down will be negative. Huh? But if something else have to do the work for the electric field, then the work down is positive. Okay. okay, so to summarize that, maybe we can add a little note here to remind ourselves, if we see a positive U, hmm. we can describe that as work done by external force to bring it closer. Yes. Can we say that? Just work done by external force. Okay, work done. Force can be your hand or whatever. La. I don't yeah. care. It can be that wooden puppet that we saw in the beginning of the video. Okay, what so, if... Work done by external force on the electric field. Mm. Mm. On the E field. Okay, why not uh, on the particle, uh, Miss? So it work done by the particle on the electric field? Mm. The particle took its own initiative to overcome the res the push away force and arrive at this new point. So if we say if it's negative view, then you have to say slightly different already. Lo. So mm -hmm. work done by who? By the electric field on the particle. The electric field went and attract the particle over. So okay. basically, yeah. The uh, analogy that I tend to use if analogy is the way to, to do sciences is if you are doing the work you being you are you the point charge is doing the work you have positive work done if i the teacher have to do the work to attract you over then your work is negative because you're not doing anything we are doing the work for you okay all right so, so that we'll is the end of this whole section of electric potential energy the yep. end of this section yes pillar three is done